video is going to be on solving polynomial inequalities. When you want to solve a linear inequality, the only rule you've got to remember is that if you multiply or divide by a negative, uh, then you flip the sign. Other than that, everything is kind of standard and normal. So for something like 2x plus 1, uh, where it's less than 0, you just solve it uh, as normal. You subtract 1 from both sides. So you get 2x is less than negative 1. And then you divide by 2. And so then you get x is less than negative 1 half. And that's your answer. You don't do anything else other than that. If you wanted to write it in set notation, you could. And that would be negative infinity to negative one half and be with parentheses because it's not equal to. Uh, but that is what you would do for a linear uh, inequality. If you have anything with a higher exponent than a one, uh, you've got to do some extra work. Uh, you've got to uh, actually find multiple sets possibly of where the inequality uh, could be made true. And so uh, by that I, a higher exponent, I mean something like x squared plus 6x is greater than negative 8. Uh, in this case, if you wanted to solve it, uh, notice that you've got this power of 2, and so it actually isn't uh, solving it like normal. Now the first thing you want to do is uh, you want to make sure they're set equal to 0. So you're going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to add 8 on both sides. So I've got x squared plus 6x plus 8 is greater than 0. And then I would solve it like I would any quadratic. Uh, I'm always going to look to solve by factoring uh, because I believe that solving by factoring is easiest. And so what multiplies to 8 and adds to 6, hmm, I guess it would be x plus 4 and x plus 2. And that's going to be greater than 0. Uh, now, when you actually set each parentheses equal to 0, x plus 4 equaling 0 and x plus 2 equaling 0, these are not going to be your answers. Because remember, an inequality doesn't just have one answer. An inequality uh, has an answer that is a group of numbers or a set. And so when I subtract 4, x would equal negative 4, and x would equal negative 2. See, these are the places uh, where the inequality would equal 0. But we're looking for places where it's greater than 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these numbers and we're going to place what I call the critical values on a number line. And we're going to test some intervals. So here's my number line. Let's call this negative 4. Let's call this negative 2. Now by testing intervals, all you got to do is pick an x value. Pick an x value, any x value in that interval. So uh, as you look to the far left over here, past the negative 4, to the left of the negative 4, I'm going to pick a number like x equals negative 5. Uh, in between negative 4 and negative 2, we can pick negative 3. And then greater than negative 2, I'm going to pick x equals 0 because it's always easiest to plug in 0. Uh, but what we're doing is we're saying that if I plug that number in to uh, the inequality, and you can plug it into either the very original or you can do that. I'm going to plug it into the one that's in green because uh, that makes life easier. Um, but uh, you can plug it into any. But if that number works, then we can say that all the numbers in that interval will work. So when you plug in negative 5 uh, and you test the intervals, uh, you can just do it in your mind. Oops, intervals. Uh, <clears throat> plug in negative 5. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. And that is bigger than 0. So we're going to give this a check mark because we like that. That's good. It works. So that means all the numbers less than negative 4. Uh, so x can be less than or equal to or not equal to, just less than, less than uh, negative 4. All the, that whole interval will work. 
Uh, then we take a look at negative 3. Plug in negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Multiply those together, you get a negative number that's not going to be greater than 0. So this middle part won't work. That interval won't work. Plug in 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. 0 plus 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. That is bigger than 0. And so we give it a check mark. So that's good. And so uh, your interval also over here is x could be greater than negative 2. And so we have an or inequality, uh, either x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than negative 2. And if you want to write that in set notation, it would be negative infinity to negative 4 with parentheses because it's not equal to, joined by the union, negative 2 all the way to positive infinity would be the numbers that work. And here is your answer. All right. Let's look at another one where it could be a little bit crazier. Um, so we've got uh, x to the third minus 4x squared, which is less than or equal to 9x minus 36. All right. And so we're going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 9x and add 36 from both sides, which gives me x cubed minus 4x squared minus 9x plus 36, and that's less than or equal to 0. Uh, since we've got four terms, we're going to factor by grouping. Group the first two. I'm going to group that negative sign in with it. Uh, so I've got x squared times x minus 4. I'm going to factor out a negative 9, and it's going to leave me with x minus 4. So it gives me x squared minus 9 times x minus 4. And that would be less than or equal to 0. And then we can factor this some more. x plus 3, x minus 3, and x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. I'm going to need some room over here, so I'm going to have to kind of work over here. Uh, the app doesn't allow me uh, to keep going too far. But this is going to be x equals negative 3, x equals positive 3, and x equals 4. And those are going to be the numbers that we put on our number line. So let's do that over here. So we've got negative 3, 3, and 4. All right, so now I hope you see it, but we have four intervals that we have to test. So I'm going to pick x equals negative 4. In between negative 3 and 3, I'm going to pick 0. In between 3 and 4, that's going to be tough, but we're going to go with x equals 3.5. And then greater than 4, we can go with x equals 5. And so you're just going to work through it, and you're going to plug each and every one in. Um, so negative 4 plus 3 uh, is negative 1. And then negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. And then negative 4 minus 4 is a negative 8. And if you were to multiply all three of those together, you're going to get a negative number. Uh, is that negative 56? And that is less than or equal to 0. So this works. Looking good. All right, plugging in 0. When I plug in 0, I would get uh, 3, negative 3, and negative 4. It's going to turn out to be a positive number. It's not going to work. All right. Uh, now when we plug in 3.5, 3 3.5 plus 3 is 6.5. And then 3.5 minus 3 is 0.5. And then 3.5 minus 4 is negative 0.5. That'll turn out to be negative. We're liking that. Check mark. And then plug 5 in. Uh, that's going to be 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 minus 3 is 2. And 5 minus 4 is 1. That's going to be all positive. And we want it to be less than or equal to 0, so that doesn't work for us. So our answer is as follows. Uh, x can be less than or equal to negative 3, or x can be in between 3 and 4, and that's the way we would write it if you're doing an inequality. Uh, but if we were doing a set, we'd say negative infinity to negative 3 with a bracket, because it's equal to union, and then we go with bracket 3 to 4, and those would be our answers that would work for this inequality. And that's how you solve a polynomial inequality. Uh, and you do a lot of the same things for rationals uh, and all kinds of other stuff like that. So have a great day.